Many people don't get involved in the lobbying process because they think they're not permitted to. And I'm here to assure you that we are permitted to engage in lobbying. That sense of it's better for me to do nothing just isn't going to work. It's not being part of the solution. If you're not part of the solution, if you're not talking to your elected officials, you are becoming part of the problem because you allow weak or bad public policy to be passed. We really need for you to go through these modules to learn how to work effectively with elected officials, to develop a comfort zone, to get past that feeling of paralysis that it's too complicated, that it's rocket science, because it really isn't. These modules are going to help you be more comfortable in writing a communication, making a phone call, making a visit, establishing that important relationship that you need to have with your elected officials. So what are the things that you're allowed to do and what are the things that you're not allowed to do? We're going to get rid of the myth for you right here and now. You could invite your elected official to come to your golf outing, to your dinner dance, to your board meeting, to tour your facility, to come to a ribbon cutting. There are all kinds of ways to get your elected official to come out to the kind of events that you want them to be aware of. But there are things that you're not allowed to do as a community benefit organization that can get you into trouble very, very quickly. And that would come under the heading of electioneering. Electioneering, simply stated, is anything that you would do to help a candidate get elected or get in the way of a candidate getting elected. You just aren't allowed to do that. So it doesn't line up with your politics. Get over your politics. We're not allowed to participate in any kind of partisan way that's going to reflect a political position versus a policy position. Lobbying, simply stated, is indicating to an elected official what outcome you would like to see on a particular bill, whether you want the bill to pass, whether you want it to, to fail or be killed, whether you want it to be modified. That's a basic overview of what lobbying is about. In Pennsylvania, under the lobby disclosure law, it also indicates that when you speak with agency people, the Department of Education, the Department of Health, the Department of Welfare, when you speak with them on the guidelines or the regulations, that is also considered lobbying. But you're permitted to lobby. The federal law permits 501c3 organizations or community benefit organizations to lobby. In exchange for the charitable deduction that we're permitted to give people when they give money to us, the federal government has substantially reduced the amount of lobbying that we're permitted to do. And in that substantial test, we don't exactly know what the threshold is, but the rule of thumb is if you get to about 10% of your budget and you're spending it on lobbying, you may want to take a look at that. There are things available to you. You can file an election 501H, which expands the amount of lobbying that you're permitted to do. But let me share this with you to help you with your comfort zone. There has never been a nonprofit or community benefit organization in Pennsylvania who has lost its tax exempt status because it has lobbied too much. Consider your budget size and how much money you would have to expend to get to that threshold. Here's the other side of it. Elected officials are reasonably bright and well intended. Even if you don't agree with their politics, they are generally submitting bills and working on legislation that they think is going to make a positive difference in their community. But neither party has a monopoly on brains or ethics. So if you're stuck on the politics, get over it. We can't influence the outcome of an election as a community benefit organization. We are stuck with the people that are there. So make the most of it. Become the expert for your elected official. It's your job for that point in time, whoever your elected official is, to make them a rock star. Because in doing so, you're going to get better public policy positions for your constituents. Now, even though you're not permitted to get involved in electioneering, there are some quasi-political things that you're permitted to do. Let me share a list of those things with you. 
When getting involved in quasi-political things, the rule of thumb is that what you make available to one viable candidate, you have to make available to all of them. If you want to make something available to the Republican, you have to also make it available to the Democrat candidate. So that rule will stand for all the things that I share here. One, you're permitted to share voting records. You can go back and, and share with your constituents that this elected official took this kind of a position on these pieces of legislation. Now that can be tricky because if you have a viable candidate who doesn't have a voting record versus a viable candidate who does have a voting record, you have to be careful that you're not setting the viable candidate with the voting record up for a favored position or an unfavored position by sharing the voting record. You're allowed to do questionnaires. How many of you have newsletters or websites? It's perfectly permissible for you to send a questionnaire to the viable candidates and then to post that in your newsletter or on your website. You cannot modify the response. You have to be careful in how you ask the question so that the question isn't perceived as a setup question to allow a candidate to have a favored position in answering it. But questionnaires are valuable and something that you can make available. You can do public forums. You can have a candidate night. And one of the things that people ask when we're looking at these quasi-political things that you're permitted to do is, what if I ask a candidate to come to the, the candidate's night or to respond to the questionnaire? What if one of them says, I don't want to come? Does that mean I can't do the forum? Does it mean I can't post the response in the newsletter? The answer is no. What's important is, is that you've made it available to all of the candidates. You want to be in a position where you can verify that that candidate had the opportunity to come and declined, or that candidate had the opportunity to respond and declined. But as long as you make it available to all the viable candidates, these are things that you can do. You can do a Legislator of the Year award. I mean, reach out and say thanks to someone who's done a nice job for you. Just don't do it around the time of the election. You can transport your constituents to the polling uh, stations. You just can't be telling them how to vote when they get there. For most of you, you, conduct voter re you can conduct voter registration. Again, you can assist a person in filling out a voter registration form, but you cannot instruct them on how to fill it out, whether it be Republican, Democrat, Independent. One of the things that you'll notice if you walk around the Capitol, you'll see political signs. Vote for this person, or make sure we vote this person out next time. Critical signs about the candidates, about fellow electeds. You can't do that in your facilities. You can't have political signs up. You can't use any portion of your facility to help with a committee advancing the campaign of an individual, even if it's off company time. You could not allow a candidate to come in and use your meeting room for a committee meeting unless you want to make it available to both candidates. You're also not permitted to give that room away. If you're going to make a room available, make it available to all the candidates and charge a rental fee. Why can't you give the room away? Because it would be considered a political contribution, and you just are not allowed to do that as a community benefit organization. So here you see a list of things that you are allowed to do, things that you're not allowed to do. The lobbying is critical. Don't let the myths, don't let the unknowns keep you from lobbying. Make sure that you're lobbying. If you have a question about lobbying, check with me at Pano, and we'll, we'll answer your questions, but make sure that you're engaged in the political process. Get that elected official out to your facility. Get them out to your events. Make sure they know who you are so that when an issue comes across their radar that affects your constituents, they know to call you for the expert advice that they need when they go to vote. In summary, I'd really like you to go through the slides attached to this module to make sure that you're familiar with the things that you're allowed to do and not allowed to do. The one thing that you don't want to do is, once you get comfortable and engaged in the process, 
is find out that you stepped out of, out of line, out of compliance somehow, and have somebody create that kind of a problem for your organization. It just isn't worth it. It's simple, it's allowable, it's something that you must do, but make sure that you do it right.